everyone welcome to today's show and if you're joining for the first time this is part of our industry series for which we meet every tuesday at 5 30 p.m eastern and this is probably going to be the last show of the year and after that we are going to take a little break so this is don't, this show. don't say that sam <laughs> you are not supposed to say that in the beginning of the show andy no, no. Towards okay the end. towards the end okay towards the end Okay, but this show is very special and that's why I wanted to bring that because, you know, you are going to miss us for a month. So make sure you are listening up closely. So today we are going to be discussing uh, Abbas or Abbas, however you want to pronounce this. You know, for us, this is the manufacturing ERP uh, that we are discussing. So we are going to have a lot of fun discussing that. Before we do that, we are going to start with everybody's intros. I am going to start with my intro. If you don't know me, Sam Gupta, Principal at Elevate IQ. Elevate IQ is the independent ERP and digital transformation consulting firm. On that note, I am going to move to Dave for his intro. Thanks, Sam. Hi, everybody. My name is Dave Chrysler, and I own an operations consulting business working with leaders in manufacturing and distribution spaces, helping them to create systems that free them to focus on driving growth and operating with excellence. And Come to you with more than 20 years in various operational leadership roles, uh, including implementing some ERPs. So excited to be here and thanks for having me. Okay, amazing. Thank you so much for being here, Dave. Andy, can I ask you to introduce yourself next? Absolutely. Thank you for inviting me, Sam. Uh, my name is Andy Pratico. I've been involved in ERP software for small to mid-sized manufacturers uh for longer than i like to say as a matter of fact when i first started in the business i think neither one of these two guys were alive yet um <laughs> uh, but anyways for a long time and i worked all over north america i've helped a lot of manufacturing companies and i also have a published book that helps companies evaluate erp software so thanks again sam and uh, looking forward to the show Okay, amazing. Thank you so much for being here, Andy. And uh, if you're in the audience and joining for the first time, make sure you guys post your questions and comments. We typically try to cover them during that show. If we run out of time, we'll make sure that you receive your answers. On that note, I am going to start with the quick commentary and uh, how these guys fit in the value chain. And um, Andy, I'm pretty sure you have probably run into them. So you are probably going to have some commentary, Dave. I'm not sure if you have any sort of ex experiences, insights, uh, you know, about this one. Uh, maybe you guys can share that as well. So obviously, this is a very interesting, uh, you know, ERP system. They started from Germany, and Germany is a very special place for ERP systems because obviously SAP started from there. Uh, you know, I don't know how many uh, ERP systems we have seen from Germany. We have seen a lot of different e-commerce systems uh, coming out from there. Uh, but this is the ERP system coming from there. Uh, I have come across them in patches, I would say, you know, I don't know. I could not really find a real trend in terms of when I was coming across them, but there are customers uh, that use them in North America as well. I don't know how penetrated they are. Uh, my uh, understanding is going to be few and far in between. Uh, I don't know what their distribution model is in North America, but again, I have seen some customers. So for the most part, the way their product is coming across, when I look at their positioning, when I look at uh, the reviews, uh, the screens, uh, it's a very interesting product. Number one, it has the manufacturing feel. Uh, so for example, let's say if you are going to compare this with your Infor FTN, uh, then it's going to be very similar feel overall from the uh, from the screen perspective. If you look at the product design, uh, the other things that you are going to notice this product with this product, and this is sort of the trend that I have seen with most of the software that is coming from Germany, except SAP, I guess. Uh, you know, they seem to be slightly more technical in nature. So this product is also very technically. Uh, oriented, the way it is designed, the way it is positioned, the kind of features that they are 
releasing and when i look at their workflow tool it gives me the feel of our friends at next world uh, you know which was the no code low code uh, erp system so obviously their perspective is going to be very 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 technical in general um so in this particular case as well i think these guys are slightly more on the technical side overall from the positioning perspective the way the product is created overall my understanding is going to be i think their sweet spot is going to be um small to mid size manufacturing organizations for the most part uh the kind of the screens and the documentation if you look at their overall positioning i guess the majority of the customers are probably going to be from germany in fact the documentation is probably going to be in german as well a lot of it yes they are going to have some english obviously because they have customers here uh but for the most part it's going to be very uh in, in, in it's going to be in in german uh you know so obviously it's not going to be a very global uh product in general so obviously if you are a business uh in germany probably this is going to be a great fit the other regions you probably need to think about it whether this is going to be the right fit for you or not so all pause there i don't know if i covered everything that we typically cover from the, the positioning perspective uh andy commentary um yeah i've heard a lot of good things um you know I'm, i'm looking forward to seeing some more of what you've investigated but uh you know i've heard that the look and feel is very very nice yeah uh anything else andy any other uh uh other i'm sure we'll come up with some things during okay. the presentation okay dave yeah i mean uh you know just kind of taking a look at uh at their website and what they've got available um yeah it'll be interesting to kind of go through this i i agree with what andy was saying in terms of kind of look and feel the other thing i i felt like was interesting about what you know from the marketing perspective it's always interesting to see you know how they position kind of the things that they highlight one of the things i took away of of what they lead with uh in terms of uh kind of solution focus is actually scheduling and production uh yeah. before financial uh which i thought you know is is kind of interesting and something that we haven't seen in any of the other um you know solutions that we have reviewed at least uh, to my recollection so um that'd be interesting to see if if we can see some of that uh functionality uh as we go through this that's probably a very interesting point and the reason why i found that interesting is because most of the manufacturing solutions like majority of them i would say all of them probably okay they all started as more of the manufacturing operation software uh you know and they sat on top of some other uh, software erp either sage or sap so these guys coming from germany i don't blame them that they probably started with the same strategy and then they probably developed their finance module as well uh, that could be the reason why you are feeling it that way but overall their production module is very 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 strong i just didn't get <laughs> any feel for the finance i guess uh, or the accounting yeah i mean that and you know it's a great point just from the standpoint of when you think about uh going down the path of an implementation um and and again it's going to be dependent on on you know your specific area but you know <laughs> your financial uh accounting uh is going to be one of the most important parts of that um so it is interesting kind of that positioning but but your points well taken so yeah it'd be it'd be great to see uh a little bit more about it yeah and the only thing i would add that we typically cover during the uh briefing is going to be overall their technology um so these guys are slightly more mature overall uh, in their tech stack uh, they have the sql database uh, which is good at least i mean they have that uh, not too sure how mature they are in their cloud offering uh, my understanding is that they started selling as on prem and if you read the reviews there are some very interesting reviews okay so we are going to keep that for the end <laughs> but you will find and by the way i mean see the reason why i called this as more of the technology solution and the only comparison i'm going to have with this one is going to be pronto from australia and overall uh, you know positioning the way uh, solution was positioned it was a very technically focused solution in fact nobody in the erp industry talk about linux uh, you know or any of the operating system who cares uh, you know which operating operating system it is for the most part erp systems and the users are going to be 
on uh, your Windows system, you know, these are finance and operations people. They are not going to be, uh, you know, operating on either mainframe or or um, uh, any of the Linux operating systems. Uh, but the, 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 this particular uh, solution is built on top of that. In fact, there are some customers who are actually preferring that, okay? So this is a very different community in general. And for the most part, I think we, when we look at the European market, there seems to be a trend of this whole push for technology for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, okay, if you look at Odoo, you know, very technically centric IT driven solution. Uh, you know, this one now we are seeing. So probably in the emerging market, there is a little bit of, uh, you know, programming craze right now because probably they don't have to count for dollars. <laughs> um, you know, it's not as expensive, I guess. So I'll add that. Any other comments, guys? No? All right, um, so let's start on the slide. So here uh, they are talking about, obviously they are the enterprise uh, resource planning solution and they are claiming that um, it's operating in roughly what, 28 languages is what they are saying. Uh, but, you know, again, the language could be very different. Um, supporting languages is easy, but when it comes to supporting, let's say the error messages, okay? It's very, 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 very difficult. So that's where your challenges are going to be. For example, let's say if you are simply uh, talking about converting your screens or whatever, uh, you know, that's all easy part. But the error messages are typically the hardest one to translate. The documentation is probably going to be the hardest one to translate as well, as well as the financial terms that the, you are going to be using. They could be very different as well. That requires very different planning. Uh, when you talk about products such as SAP, they spend a lot of time thinking through these things that, okay, if a customer is going to be using in Germany or uh, Brazil, you know, what is their experience going to be? And they literally design the whole experience in each of those countries. But that's probably not going to be possible with all of these products. So they are going to have traces that you are going to come to know only after you have used this product for some time. And that you are going to find in reviews as well. Uh, just one more comment, and yep. you already, already know this as well, Sam, is the other challenge regarding multilingual systems is the field names. Because when they're doing their own custom reports, whether whatever tool they're using, uh, you know, if this one's in German, uh, it's not that easy. Could not agree more. And uh, NDL, I'll, I'll paint some more colors here so that listeners can follow along. And field names, when you say... Uh, I my understanding is that Andy, you are talking about the field names that are going to be at the database level. Yes. Not really your UI Sorry, field. I, meant, I should have said record names. Yes. Exactly. UI fields are okay. Okay. You can you can change them in whatever language you want. You can everybody can have their own language if they want. Okay. The UI fields are not a problem in most ERP systems. They are going to be customizable. But when you talk about the database fields, okay, database fields, you cannot change the name. So if the, the original product was designed for Germany, those fields are going to be uh, in German as well. So sometimes that could be very confusing for developers, okay? They might mix things up. For example, the classic example always is invoice versus receipt. In some countries, uh, you know, we call this invoice in North America. But, you know, in some other countries, they might call it as receipt, you know. So these are some of the terms. And right now we are talking about just English. When languages are going to be combined, good luck with that translation. <laughs> it could be all over the place. Um, any other comments, guys? No? Okay. Uh, so Abel's a business suite is based on its own uh, object-oriented database, which is very interesting that they are calling their own object-oriented database. I'm not sure why they would design that. That's very interesting. The following APIs are possible for the database access, a Java-based framework. Uh, and they have a little bit why, of mainframe. Why is that interesting, Sam? Uh, interesting what? The database? Yeah, you said that their object. Uh... Meaning they are hiding something, OK? When somebody has a proprietary technology, uh, that means they cannot work <laughs> with the mainstream technologies. That's why it is interesting. And now the next line reads, you know, for GL. Uh, okay, so you can clearly see that they have done a little bit of mainframe, right? So I don't know how much code is really migrated. Uh, they may start, they may have started because this is a very old company. They started in roughly what, 1981. So I don't know how much has been migrated completely to your 
newer SQL da based databases, uh, there is a possibility that some modules may be migrated and some, some not. Uh, so that could be a possibility why they had to come up with their own database. Um, you know, in 2022, I just don't see why anybody would design a database from scratch, unless you are talking about HANA. Uh, <laughs> um, okay, so other things, I mean, they have C, C++. I don't see any other technical details that are, uh, you know, interesting here on the event level, the business logic and dialogue control can be adjusted or configured using event handlers, which is very similar to most ERP systems in four has it, Epicore has it, uh, but their event handler is slightly different, uh, slightly more slick in my mind. Uh, these can be optionally implemented in, uh, I don't know what FOS, uh, and then Java. Uh, that's the 4GL language, okay? So obviously they are giving you a choice. Um, so I, I can almost guarantee that the, the big time majority of the code is probably running in 4GL as well. Um, Okay, uh, business portal is based on Liferay, uh, and Liferay, well, uh, my understanding is that that was owned by IBM. Uh, and again, I can connect some dots here uh, with respect to your Pronto and this. Uh, Pronto was very big on uh, IBM technology, so maybe they had some IBM correlation there as well. Um, so here we have Liferay, then, uh, the reporting is done in the Jasper reports, which is unique as well. Most companies have done Crystal, but these guys are doing Jasper, which is okay. Uh, no big deal. Okay, um, so workflow. Uh, overall, when I look at this workflow, I get a feel of my MuleSoft, to be honest, okay? Uh, when we looked at Rootstock, that's when we had such elegant feeling, feeling of the workflow. I have not seen this elegant workflow with any other system. For example, let's say if I compare this with uh, Epicor in 4, it's not going to be as easy. Here, it's very clear the way it is done. You have form action approval, auto task gateway. If my recollection is right, we had literally six options in, in your root stock. Uh, <laughs> um, so this is very, very, very interesting overall. I think this is going to be far easier overall for business people. The only challenge I'm going to get, and that we are going to talk in the next screen, the way their screens are designed, again, they are very technical, okay? And that's why they are probably able to do these workflows very easily. Um, so we'll look at the, the technical aspect of these screens and the challenges that you're going to get because of that. So not on this one. This is the production, uh, you know, look and feel, the one that you were talking about, Dave. Uh, this is very slick overall. You have the days. Uh, you have the dates, uh, and then you have the work center. I could not really locate if there was any sort of correlation between your material and operations, uh, but overall, it does look decent uh, from the scheduling perspective. But one thing you might want to note, the look and feel is very similar to your N4 app team, uh, you know, the way your screens are designed. So one thing that you might be able to note here, the these screens are very legacy. Okay, so obviously they have not re-architected this. So it's a very similar architecture that you have some sort of iPass that you are trying to create and you are trying to publish these screens, the legacy feel on top of that iPass um, to, you know, so, so that you don't have to customize. I'm pretty sure they are probably doing the cloud native architecture as well. But right now the way it stands, it doesn't seem like uh, cloud native architecture. This is a very legacy feeling of the screens at this point of time it appears on this screen that it's uh this is infinite scheduling is that your perception if you look at the percentages some of them are over 100. i am gonna have to agree with that i don't see any options here i don't know how sophisticated these scheduling yeah, is going to be overall yeah but based on the way screen is designed they might have all of those features to be honest um it's just that, you know, it's a very clunky code, so it might be buggy. Um, that could be a possibility. Uh, Sam, you mentioned Pronto a couple times. Does it use, does it still use the Progress database or is it more SQL Server now? Which one you are know? you talking about? Are you talking about Pronto, Pronto or? Yeah, Pronto. Pronto. My, uh, Dave, do you remember from the session? My understanding is that... They are probably uh, on SQL right now. Yeah, that's... Okay. 
That's what I thought. I, 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 I don't recall specifically, but that that's, I, I'm thinking that's what it was. I want to say that somewhere in there uh, that uh, either there was an article that we found on Wiki or, or that they had uh, switched that from uh, from the progress uh, to the SQL database, Andy. Andy, if my recollection is right, I think they are using DB2. And uh, I know DB2 is not that popular. Uh, but I don't know if it is really, uh, you know, mainframe centric. I think that is SQL database. Uh, GB2 is a SQL database. So they are probably using DB2. They are still very tightly correlated with IBM right now. Okay, so here is the interesting part. So all of a sudden, you know, this is looking very sexy and appealing, right? Uh, <laughs> the reason why it is looking very sexy and appealing is because you are looking at the customer portal. Uh, and this is a very uh, interesting demo trick that every single ERP vendors out there use this. Uh, you know, they are going to modernize your CRM. They are going to modernize uh, your customer portals. Uh, but the ERP is still going to be very legacy. And that's why you are able to see very modern feel here. And this is exactly what you are going to see in the demo. And they are going to uh, just swipe under the rug the other functionality or you might not be able to notice uh, you know the technology difference uh, but this is a very modern cloud native uh, you know feeling uh, with the screens because you know this is life ray and they have implemented this in Li life ray and typically implementing any sort of portals e-commerce that's going to be easy uh, the erp is a much heavier lift in general uh, any comments uh, no okay um, so this is where I get the feeling that, you know, this is a very technically centric system. Okay. The reason why I get that feel is because when you look at the transaction type, it's saying transaction type sales order. And I'm looking at, okay, where is my, okay. If this is a sales order screen, it should read sales order somewhere, right? So you are sort of selecting the option for a sales order. And then you have a bunch of tables that are basically populating in a list screen. Okay, that's what I call very technical experience of the platform. Okay, so this is not really designed to be an ERP. They are trying to sort of shove ERP functionality in a very reusable modular, uh, you know, technical platform, which is great. Uh, you know, if you're trying to promote your low code, no code, but not sure how many people are really going to like it because the experience is not really going to be customized for them. Now, you can customize these screens because, again, the foundation of these platforms is going to be very technical. But then, again, you are looking at very, uh, you know, large amount of dollars in those customization, testing time, uh, increase the implementation risk, uh, as well as maintenance nightmare. Um, what else do I have here? Uh, so my understanding, this is very similar feel as your next world or pronto those are going to be my closest comparison um overall um okay so here now again i am looking for the screen name i could not see maybe that's not captured as part of the screen chart uh but for the most part i could not really find okay what was the screen about but here we can gather that this is going to be uh, you know, the product as well as the work order is what they are trying to do here. Now, I don't know what work order suggestion mean and where that is coming from, to be honest. Uh, why they would have that, I am trying to uh, conclude if that is some sort of industry functionality that they have tried to build or whatever. But um, Commonly, that would be because it's a planned order. And from my understanding, uh, this product is more designed for long run a forecastable manufacturing. So this would be your MRP plan, the work order suggestion. That could be, that's a very interesting comment there. That's definitely a possibility. And I sort of agree with you, Andy, that this is probably going to be the long forecastable sort of processes. You are right because, uh, you know, we have a lot of different dates uh, on um, the scheduling. So that's definitely a possibility. Um, what else do we have here? Uh, the costing looks okay. Uh, it's at least organized. Um, there are a few things, for example, contribution margin on the costing, which is very interesting. Um, I have not seen contribution margin as part of the costing workflow. 
because typically costing is very separate from your revenue. So you are sort of mixing those two things here. Um, so I don't know why you would have that as part of this screen. Um, that, uh, that would be my take. Guys, if you have any comments, please go ahead. No, but like you say, interesting. Yeah. Um, any comments, Dave? No. Okay, so now we are going to, and again, it's very hard to gauge anything from uh, the screens unless we really review the reviews. Uh, that's where the real truth is. So here, this is a very interesting user. We are talking about Canada, 200 to roughly 500 employees. And that would be my understanding that that's probably going to be their sweet spot uh, based on the design, based on the product. So here she's saying, uh, you know, effective and easily customizable ERP software. We have large and complicated bills of materials that were difficult to manage. We did a bit of work to get them flowing through Abyss effectively. Now, typically, when I look at any of the tier three, tier four system or tier five, maybe, uh, you know, my suspicion always is going to be they are going to be cutting corners, either in terms of the bomb layers or one to end scenarios. We there is going to be something that is going to be missing, and even if I sit for like you know two weeks in a demo, it's going to be really hard even for me to figure it out. Uh, okay, what I'm going to be missing, you will find these things only during the implementation. Okay, so now based on this review, there is something that I am missing that you know that okay, bills of materials probably are not as uh, sophisticated. So now, Andy, to your point, when you mentioned that this is probably going to be for the long lead time forecastable products but when you think about those products my understanding is going to be that they are probably going to have a lot of bomb layers if that is the case then this is probably not going to work for that so now would you change your opinion that this is still for that or do you think that there are going to be patches in terms of the industry where this is going to be for the forecastable product but they are not going to have as many bomb layers andy yeah i i don't i mean i've been from what my understanding is, is that it's much better for flat bombs than it is for complex bombs. But I'm not sure if I see anything that causes it to not fit complex bombs. But again, we don't even again, if I'm uh, what I'm saying is even if I sit in a demo for like two weeks, <laughs> it's going to be hard to find that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's the challenge with ERP systems, to be honest, unless you literally implement a scenario, it's going to be very hard to find that. So you are literally relying uh, on either your OEMs or VARs, whatever they are going to tell you. But uh, yeah, I mean, or you are going to hear in the reviews. So this is a real truth that obviously she struggled with it. So there's something going on with bombs. So obviously do little testing there uh, overall in terms of bombs, uh, how many layers can it support? And my recommendation always is going to be uh, the truth is going, you are going to find the truth during your MRP runs. Uh, you know, and that you are probably going to discover after a year when you are in the implementation cycle. So good luck with that. Right, <laughs> that's what happens. Yeah. The demo uh, looks great. Exactly, exactly. Exactly. And then by the time you cannot do anything with VAR or OEM because they have already right. made their money. <laughs> Too expensive to change now. Yeah. Yeah. But it's not, I mean, it might not even work, right? Sometimes, Andy, it's not that every ERP implementation goes live. Um, well, that's very true. But, you know, if you all, if you realize the scheduling portion of any manufacturing system is always implemented last. Exactly. exactly. So it's a year before you find out whether it works or not. Exactly. Exactly. Okay, so the second review here, this is coming from two months ago. This is five years ago. So there could be a possibility that there have been some changes with the product. Uh, but this one is coming two years ago. So it's here... The same one, isn't it? Two months, Andy. Oh, the second one below. I'm yeah. sorry. So, oh, yeah, okay. two months. I two months. already read that one. Sorry. No. Yeah, no big deal. Um, so here they are saying Abbas was first ERP system. It helped us grow into the business we are today. Uh, and I would guess that any of the first time buyers, they typically are not going to be as savvy 
in understanding what is in, involved in selecting an ERP system. And they are typically the ones who select any of the tier five, tier four, just because either because of the cost or they just don't understand what is involved in these ERP systems. So here they are saying we are former users of Abus. Uh, you know, it's only because as a growing company, uh, we needed the ability to schedule for engineer to order custom manufacturing and Abus excels at scheduling for widget manufacturing. So Andy, so the user is agreeing with you, I guess there, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that's going to be my understanding they as well. They customize it. Um, so Andy, why are they calling this as widget manufacturing? Because widget would be more of the make to stock, right? If this is going to be pure engineer to order. Commodity. Yeah, commodity. Okay, commodity engineer to order, that's not making a ton of sense, Andy. So how does no, that work? No, it doesn't at all. I, I, the fact that they're, I, they're, but you see, they're calling that a con though. So they're saying that they are an ETO custom manufacturer, but this software doesn't handle that. It's more designed for widget manufacturing. So therefore we had to customize it and they had to, they looked, looked for a solution that could help in this critical area. Other than other than that, they love Abbas or Abbas or whatever it is. I see. Okay, so basically, what you are saying is we needed the ability to schedule for engineer to order custom manufacturing, and they couldn't do it. I see. Okay, so okay, so so you are saying Abus excels at commoditized manufacturing, which is going to be make to stock widget manufacturing, and if you want exactly. to utilize it for custom manufacturing, then you have to customize a lot. Okay, exactly. now it makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dave, are you with us? Yeah, yeah. I uh, I was going to question the same thing, but uh, and only based on one of the um, one of the customer success stories that I've found. But I, I think it kind of all makes sense now. It was a um, uh, an electrical. Uh, what? Did, how do they frame this? An electrical engineering. Uh, uh, customer success story that they had on their highlight on their website. But I, I, I think it, I, I agree and, and makes sense now uh, after kind of rereading that. So, yeah. And electrical manufacturing in my experience, it's more of the assembly. It's not a real manufacturing to be honest. Well, <laughs> and, it depends. And assembly, yeah. It depends. I agree. They're doing at, board at first, stuffing. You know, if they're a contract manufacturer and they're doing board stuffing, that's real manufacturing, right? Way, yeah. Way they're daughters and all that. <clears throat> At first glance, it, it didn't appear to be quite that simplified, Sam, but um, yeah, I, I, I don't disagree with where you're coming from. Yeah, completely agree, Andy. Uh, you're you're right as well. Um, okay, any other comments, guys? No, sometimes electronics firms have already subbed out the, the, the populating of their boards, and then, yeah, it's just assembly. Yeah, I mean, their processes are not going to be as complicated. Even if they, their processes are going to be complicated, they probably are running on paper. Okay, that's been my right. experience. Um, you know, they are not going to be very tech savvy in general. Uh, Dave. Yeah, absolutely. No, that that's what caught my eye. So this company was a um, like a uh, a games manufacturer, like an amusement games manufacturer. Oh. That's that's what caught my eye, which was why I was thinking originally, like. How does this not make sense with, you know, based on what this user was saying? But, um, yeah, it, it, but, it all but makes sense. You now. mean like a video game? Yeah, like uh, an amusement game, you know, like they've got a picture of a, um, uh, you know, like a whack-a-mole. Uh, okay, so know, it, it would of, be, even though it's a level of complexity, it's still repetitive. Yeah, well, that's it, originally. It, originally, yeah. I was thinking that it was going to be more of an engineer to order stereo, but then you know, kind of digging into into it deeper, it it is more of a, a you know a, a widget manufacturer because it, it, it changes the revs once it, a year. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So, and to your point, Sam, it's it's more than likely. And again, I didn't read through the full thing, but more than likely, they're bringing in some of those assembled, you know, some of those uh, pre-built components as as you know, purchased items and just doing the assembly on it, versus you know, creating uh, Bill's material with you know, engineered to to uh, to order components. So per yeah. you know, per order, right? So. Yeah, great points, guys. Great points. Could not agree more. Some more reviews. So now this is coming from Germany, which is their place, I guess. You know, in general, 
uh, and uh, this is the 11 to 50 employees. So this is the the right fit in my mind. Uh, mechanical industrial engineering is probably going to be a good fit. Uh, now the user is saying all these positive reviews makes me wonder if we are really using the same software. So obviously, <laughs> has had very negative experience uh, with the software, which is very interesting. So let's read. I mean, I don't want to just look at the stars and then let's look at the comments and where the sentiment is coming from. And if everybody's um, opinion is subject to their previous experience. Like, right, but I mean, again, we are trying to connect the dots. So in the previous two reviews, we have clearly seen that there is a trend there in, in the review. Now let's see if this guy uh, is sort of consistent with that as well. So here, uh, you know, this person is saying when it comes to sales there is no automated support to follow up uh, upon leads projects etc uh, there isn't the slightest piece of crm integrated we wanted to connect a soft phone to the erp which shouldn't be that complicated and asked our it admin blah 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 okay so let's look at the profile of the customer who is commenting this this is a sales manager guy okay they oh, typically okay. don't have as much understanding of the erp software and that's where the comment so this particular comment is going to be on the user itself they don't understand how to use the erp it's not the problem with the software uh, okay so the problem is really with, <laughs> with the reviewer uh, you know and we want to be fair with everybody here so in this particular case i guess the problem is really with dennis uh, not really with the with the software so here the cons is saying, okay, where should I begin? As somebody wrote in another review, the colors really hurt your eyes. Come on, dude. You are talking about colors for any ERP? You're killing me. Well, uh, if you're colorblind, they won't. <laughs> exactly, right? <laughs> uh, of course, that is only a minor issue, which can I can overlook if it was the only problem. UX is a nightmare. <laughs> Again, UX is very subjective to the person who is yeah, using totally. it. <laughs> I mean, we just start, so you we need just to be trained, buddy. <laughs> the problem is not really with the software, okay? Um, there are endless list tabs and fields that are useless for 90%, 95% of the users. Yes, that could be true as well, but that's how our ERP systems work. Now, if you are going to change the look and feel of that, you are looking at maintenance nightmare. So deal with it. I would say, you know, you are better off using the system as it is um now do not blame them for because it seems that if you didn't grow up with it it's next to impossible learning it uh yes uh you know this is going to be a problem uh typically for sales and marketing folks the erp could be very hard to learn but again depending upon where you want to invest money whether you want to invest money in fragmented architecture you could do that but then you are going to be spending a lot in it or you could train people or you can hire people who are going to be comfortable using ERP. So again, this goes to the user. There is no problem with the software here. Okay, uh, the next review is coming from Ashley Parts and Parts Inventory and Documentation in Canada. Big Warehousing, company. big company. That's shocking. And maybe they are using it just for one facility. Uh, that's a possibility in the tier two scenario. Uh, okay, so here uh, Ashley is complaining. A few too many lines in a stock journal Two lines per transfer is rather high, unnecessary, and tough on the eyes. Undoing posted mistakes could be made more simple and seems to be headed in that direction with the update coming our way. Happy to see this soon. Huh. Again, it seems like user is the problem. I don't think this is the software problem. Um, I think their expectation is probably very quick books. Uh, you know, feel, and that's why she's complaining about that. But the, the problem here is training. It's not really the software. That's, it's possible. That's what that person's used previously, but a company of this size would never be using QuickBooks. Uh, maybe she came from somewhere. And yeah, she... previous, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Sure. Yeah. Well, and Sam, you kind of hit it. I mean, I've seen scenarios where, you know, they're putting the total number of employees under the corporate umbrella, let's say, and, and their facility is a, uh, you know, one facility, maybe a small parts distribution, you know, warehouse or something like that. That was uh, maybe an acquisition facility. Like, I mean, this could be legacy software. There's tons of ways to read into this so absolutely yeah, yeah acquisition is a great example dave and most likely it's probably going to be that because you know with acquisition most of the companies i mean the smaller ones they are probably going to be using spreadsheet quickbooks and they are going to feel they are very different uh, once you come to the culture of corporate then okay good luck with that because you have to use all of this <laughs> <laughs> i have seen that firsthand yes right <laughs> Uh, all right, guys, so some more comments here. This is also coming from 2019, which is very recent. 
Okay, so here the comment is very interesting. Here the, uh, the user is saying searching by description is solely reliant on how the part was originally created. For example, if the part is uh, one by two long screw and you search by 0.5 inch, uh, it won't come up. Um, and we frequently run out of parts because parts that are needed are not showing up on the buying list for purchasing team. Okay, so there are a lot of different possibility. I have never seen this. Okay, so maybe the search is not as efficient. And this goes back to my comment that this is obviously a very legacy platform. So their search is not going to be as smooth as one of the <clears throat> recent platforms in general. Um, I don't know whether you guys recall this. Um, your system search is not going to be a Google search, okay? So, <laughs> so whatever you are going to write in the text is what you can probably search well, based on. The fact that he's using a different term, 0.5 as opposed to one half. Yeah. Obviously, you're not going to find it, but a lot of systems nowadays also have aliases. So, if that part number was also described as 0.5 inch, then it'll find it. <clears throat> so, I want to be careful there. So you are saying that describe this as part of the alias and alias are typically used for the vendor records, right? You don't necessarily- Not have... necessarily, it can be. Usually they have vendor records as well and vendor part numbers and cross references there. But sometimes a company will have, uh, sometimes they'll call the same thing multiple, depends who you talk to in the company, they call it something different. So they'll have aliases so that everybody communicates equally. Um, I have seen descriptions being very long. I have also seen four or five different descriptions for part. Uh, I'm not sure which alias and Dave, uh, you can tell me if you have seen anything different here. Uh, but typically you put a lot of different details. I mean, it's not that you have to have another alias for that. You can put whatever description you like in, in the description and then it's going to be part of your search, right? Right. <laughs> if you put half, one half inch and 0 0.5 inch, you'll find it. Yeah, but I mean, look at the amount of maintenance that you have to do. <laughs> oh, no, you wouldn't do it. That's what. That's the reason why the alias comes in play yeah. is because some people call it half, some people call it 0.5. Um, any comment, Dave? No, I mean, I, I've, I've definitely seen it multiple ways. You know, what, what I would say, uh, you know, kind of the way to handle it is it, it – to me, it really comes down to kind of an, an organization and, and and process function, right? Defining those things going in. I mean, if, if you're, uh, you know, item master, branch plant, what what have you, right? Whatever we're talking about for that specific organization, if, if there's no standardization around there, there's no process documentation to, to define and develop uh, these item numbers, you know, then to Andy's point, multiple people are going to be saying, uh, the same thing differently. And that can be very confusing, you know, throughout the organization. So I much prefer to kind of attack it from a uh, process, Broken. you know, yeah. standardization and training point Agreed. than I would develop something system wide to uh, accommodate maybe, let's say, uh, a minority group within the company that likes to reference it by something specific. Yeah. You know, it's, it's sometimes it can be challenging to get everybody on board to see that. Yeah. Uh, but that's really the best solution from the standpoint of standardization uh, and developing those, you know, those processes around how do we create new items? How do we reference old items? This is how we do it. There is no, you know, well, what some days we feel like referencing them as millimeters and other days we like to convert them <laughs> to inches. I mean, it's, it shouldn't be, uh, you know, this is how I feel about it. And besides who wants to deal with Canadians, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So you picked up on that. I, I did. I heard that. Yeah. Oh, that was quick. You moved it in there fast. Yeah. Um, yeah. So very interesting, guys. The only other thing that I would add here on this commentary is going to be the MRP functionality. So I don't know what's going on, but if you are not able to find the parts as part of your MRP algorithm, then there is a real problem. So I don't know what's going on here. Either there's a configuration problem or there's a real problem with the software. Well, I, I always tell people, you know, uh, when you're implementing an ERP, it's the perfect opportunity to revisit your processes or processes. You notice I'm bilingual there, Dave. Uh, 
Yeah. Yes, I did notice that. <laughs> I, I mean, I think this issue, at least specific to this comment, probably comes back to what you were saying in some previous uh, reviews in terms of, you know, kind of operator error, if you will, user, you know, user training functionality, yeah. call it whatever you want. Um, but I, I think that's probably what this stems from versus a, you know, systemic issue uh, with not being able to find some specific item that's been created. And if you don't have the disciplines in place to, for example, for consistent part numbering, you know, like in this example, uh, ERPs will come up with some idea to fix that problem, but really it, they should be fixing the root cause. Exactly. Yeah, Could not agree more, guys. Uh, any other comments? If not, let's move to the next one. Okay, so here, this is coming, this is a very old review coming from 2022. So uh, let's see what 12, they have to say. 12. Uh, 2012. Yeah, it's 10 years old. So prior to moving to Abus ERP, my organization used M2M, uh, which is very interesting. Okay, I would put probably these two solutions in the same bucket uh, in terms of the size. Um, now, this person is saying M2M was not easy to use, was not easily customized to accommodate our needs. To make customizations in M2M, we had to have a programmer write a number of external programs that would write to M2M, allowing us to get what we needed from the system. My understanding from this comment is going to be either this is, a, this is an implementation issue. Uh, I think they are fairly even product in general. Um, if they had have had any sort of problems with M2M, most likely this is probably implementation issue, and that's why they struggled with it. And then, or maybe it is the industry issue that you know, for some industries, M2M is probably going to be friendlier. For some industry, your EBS is going to be friendlier. Uh, that, that's probably true, but I think the made to manage technology is going to be behind what the Abyss has available. I mean, I mean, they were both. I mean, they're both built in the nineteen early nineteen eighties. But I think Abbas is a little more advanced, like upgraded technology wise. So, based on the comments that we are reviewing, it seems like for ZL and D right now. No, you're right. <laughs> but then, but then, M made to manage was Cobol. Um, originally, four GL would be Cobol as well, right, Andy, or, or no? No, no, no. Cobol is a three GL. Interesting. Okay. Okay. Uh, Cobol, yeah. uh, 3GL started with World War II, right? <laughs> Interesting. Obviously, it was not born uh, back the then. 80s, <laughs> in the 90s. <laughs> so no, a little uh, further back than I can recall. Uh, Sorry, guys. What's that? I said that's a little further back than I can recall. <laughs> well, exactly. like I told you, I, I've been in the business longer than you guys have been alive. So <laughs> take it for what it is. Okay. Um so here we have from Aviation Aerospace, uh, 51 to 200, uh, 2017, which is not very old. So here the person is saying that functionality in the core product before you add custom solutions, often you can meet your requirements with just a little bit of training and small changes to your process. That's probably right as well. I like this comment. And the reason why yeah, exactly. it is because I guess these technical systems are trying to promote that you should be customizing, but uh, what this guy is trying to recommend is don't customize, change your processes. And that's what you should be doing, So, which is right. Um, here we have this one from coming from 2017, 11 to 50 employees, furniture, uh, which is very interesting. Not happy with company product average. Uh, we were misled during the sales process in that we were told the system could function in ways that it could not. Okay, implementation process was a mess as it took 16 months, then on the day of launch, we were provided a product that did not work, which is very interesting. It took months for them. And by the way, this is coming from 2017, guys. So it's not, it's very recent. Uh, it took months well, for them. Relatively recent. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it took months for them to send a representative out to take a look. And the conclusion was that we had to start over. Can you believe this, guys? Uh, oh, you know, terrible. either they over customize something is going on here, which is not making sense. But this is a very common situation overall with the ERP implementation. 
And OEMs cannot do anything if you are going to over customize or if you are going to have an implementation consultant who is going to over customize. That's why it's a very implementation is very, very, very important. Okay. Uh, implementation is probably going to be more important than your selection, to be honest. Uh, okay. And if you don't really put that design architecture thinking during your implementation phase, it's very likely that you will fail. Um, here, it took months for them to send a representative out to take a look. Uh, and the conclusion was that we had to start over. I've already read that. Uh, created a new system for us, and we had to recreate six months of data, re-entering all sales and AR, but it was impossible to do all data, so the purchasing side was entered as opening numbers, uh, so they tried to actually enter the historical data, which is a terrible mistake. Nobody should do that. Any ERP system, please, please, please don't do that. <laughs> okay, that's a terrible idea. You, if, if you have a lot of money you want to waste, please come to me, I'll help you. Uh, but don't waste on historical data. Or, or if you want money to waste, <laughs> do it this way. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, we lost some GTL from the sales side as well. We have historical data that can never be retrieved. Um, mm. Yeah, nobody is to blame. You are to blame. Sorry. Uh, requires too many customizations to meet needs, which gets very expensive. Why are you customizing to begin with? Uh, ERP systems are not supposed to be customized. Uh, often get a programmer who has not worked on your system, does not recall the details of your system company. Um, so you pay for them to research your issue compatibility that's very common especially when you are working with large companies uh just because you know especially if you're dealing with support uh, you know support is really designed for consultants not really for the end users um so this is a very 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 interesting comment okay uh, the industry is information technology and services so obviously this person is going to be very excited about technology uh, you know any technical details is probably going to be a, a good thing for them so best Linux software, ERP software in Europe. Uh, now, I don't know why you would be selecting an ERP system based on that, based on an operating, operating system. Uh, this is coming from August 2015, but any IT guys are going to be so happy about it just because that's what they are familiar with. But I don't know a CFO that is going to be comfortable with Linux. Uh, so <laughs> good luck finding that. No, uh, that's very true. But you know what happens a lot of times, companies will assign their IT person, an internal IT person to lead an ERP evaluation because that's, they work with software. It seems to, you know, and all of a sudden the fact that it's Linux based is way more important than the functionality. Exactly. Exactly. Could not agree more. And people have to save their jobs as well. Right. So. <laughs> well, there are lots of people out there that are Microsoft haters and they, they'll lean to Linux because yeah. of that, you know? Yeah. Um, so here I can tell they are very flexible and efficient team. They do the job. The only, uh, I like ABUS ERP as this is the only Linux based ERP that has complete functionality uh, and developed as a regular ERP with particular focus in production, which is in itself rare. Uh, developed a small team of Linux uh, professionals, which are more expensive and rare to find. Yes, they are more expensive. In Bulgaria. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They are <laughs> really Windows expensive everywhere. Go figure. <laughs> and try to find a CFO who knows Linux, okay? Yeah, they are probably yeah. going to be charging 10x. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, some more comments here. Uh, mm, the other person you is mentioned all... right there. Uh, exactly, exactly. The con. So error messages in German language. Uh, still appear at times. This is coming in 2017. Learning curve for users. English documentation help is not always clear. Uh, runs on Linux server as we are clearly seeing that they, and this is where my problem is with this, okay? Is it a real cloud, not cloud? Why do you have to go through all this deployment? You know, again, you are buying a package software. It's supposed to be, it, I'm not going to call this plug and play, but at least from the deployment perspective, it should be plug and play. <laughs> Um, okay, uh, this is also very interesting comment. 2017, buyer, be warned, big promises, sneaky contract, okay? From sales to implementation, we had nothing but failures. Uh, now, this is very interesting, okay? So the second one says, first day installation of Sandbox. How does that work? That's not making any sense whatsoever. Sandbox. There's two technical systems, 2017. How can a Sandbox fail? Uh, this software will not allow product move until employees log out for the day and obtain a manager's approval. Crazy. Uh, this limits an organization setup, to... Though, right? <laughs> What's that? That's got to be a setup. 
I really don't know what's going on. In 2017, you know, probably businesses were moving on cloud, I guess, right? <sighs> yeah, I just don't understand, you know, why you have to deal and invest in such technical details right now uh, in 2022. Yeah. Um, there has to be something fundamentally off about the system that I'm not able to understand. I mean, that uh, next line almost really highlights that. It says, you know, we've encountered countless errors with a system that is vanilla, you know, as they say, no mods, you know, so that's, that's kind of highlights that even further. I mean, you know, some of, some of the other comments potentially could have been passed away as, you know, heavily modded, you know, something like that. But, uh, you know, again, for based on what it, what this one says, it's, um, well, the one the one below that, Dave, is even worse because it talks about. I, I'm assuming when they call the hotline, <laughs> they immediately recite what the legal terms are. <laughs> Sorry, that's the way it is. That's that is big stuff. Sand or wow. pound sand or whatever the expression is. And this is the challenge, to be honest. But tier three, tier four oh, yeah. systems, uh, you know, again, you don't want to get into all of these issues. There is a there could be a real problem. Uh, with the technical maturity. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's it. Uh, any other comments, guys? Uh, you know, like, like I said at the beginning, uh, you know, I, I, can, I, I know a company, I, I think they got rid of it, actually, but I know a company right near the, a, a, a custom job shop right near the, the, the uh, Pearson Airport, actually, Sam, um, that bought this product, uh, but I think about a year, year and a half later, they replace it with something else. Yeah. And I, I don't know if, um, you know, obviously how their website is set up, but they, they do have several U S installations, uh, as customer success stories in there, which I was a little surprised to see, uh, just, you know, leading into the conversation. Uh, but there are several of them. Uh, so whether or not it changes based on location and they highlight, you know, specific ones uh, to where you're at. Uh, but I was I was surprised to see so many um, U.S. based, um, you know, customer success stories in there on their website. Well, they, like 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 Sam mentioned, they're European based. And, uh, you know, up until 10 years ago, they probably didn't have any customers in North America. Yeah, guys. So if you guys don't have any other comments, we can touch on Here's these comments. Here's a good one from uh, Anders. Yeah. Uh, Dave, do you want to read? Yeah, yeah. sure. Uh, Abbas came for manufacturing and leading with scheduling and not financials. It would be fascinating to have a game of risk it's style time. map of what <laughs> countries <laughs> that were ERP, MRP, uh, WMS, CMS, etc., to show the evolution of each system. <laughs> I completely <laughs> agree, Hunters. Uh, to see that a product started in MRP and then invaded ERP and CMS <laughs> functionality <laughs> would be a great visualization <laughs> tool to understand the philosophy of the product. Yeah, c couldn't agree more. Uh, it would be uh, no doubt a fun way to illustrate that so okay if you guys don't have any other comments i'm probably gonna bring the second one andy do well, you want to touch on this one sure uh regarding the customer portal very nice look and completely different design from the rest of the product that's yeah. no question yeah. a toss-up between abbas and the australian uh pronto customer portal for looks did they mention how they handle connection for that data since they can do on-prem setups? Is it a synced cloud instance yet? Yeah, we, I'm not sure if we know. Yeah, that's always very challenging when you are going to be syncing your on-prem with, um, uh, with your cloud, uh, especially if you are desktop-based software. If it is server-based, then it's probably going to be okay. Uh, but desktop-based, we have, have seen a lot of challenges with other software. So I completely agree. I think this is going to be really challenging in general. Um, I'll uh, bring the last one. So, uh, Dave, do you want to go with this one? Yeah. Uh, regarding the search between half inch versus uh, 0.5 inch screws, that's asking a lot from some AI natural language processing. I've seen fastener specific ERP systems that tackle this by having categories and classes for quarter inch, half inch, three quarter inch, et cetera. But of course, that means tagging every item with its correct length, pitch, diameter, and material. 
Uh, but it seems like in this case, they're asking Abbas to perform a trick you'd find more in a distribution centric ERP. So maybe they bought the wrong thing. Uh, oh. They should have reached out to, and I can't uh, see the rest. Well, on dot, my dot, screen. Dot, anybody. Yeah. Um, so maybe that alias I was describing is more wholesale distribution centric. Um, that can uh, be a yeah. Go ahead, Dave. Well, I I I don't know about that, Andy, because uh, I mean, uh, you know, in the software systems that I've seen in that space, uh, have not had uh, something specific, um, you know, like that. Like I said, I I would recommend going back from a a, a process and items, you know, standpoint to uh, to address it, because uh, again, you look at this, and I don't disagree with what Anders is saying. It's interesting, right? For a specific application, but at the end of the day, you're still relying on your processes to ensure that this is getting tagged correctly, being input into the system correctly. So fundamentally, you still have the same challenge, uh, regardless of how it gets executed in the system. It, it comes back down to having good fundamentals in place when you are doing item setup and communicating clearly across, you know, your your organization how this particular thing is going to be referenced uh, and that follows through throughout your entire you know order order ordering process if that's the case you know supply chain everything yeah could not agree more guys uh anything else before we close no nope. thank you so much sir of yeah. course guys that's it for today if you joined for the first time this was part of our industry series for which we meet every tuesday at 5 30 p.m eastern so make sure you guys are going to be here in the new year because we are not going to be here next week okay we'll happy come back. holidays everybody <laughs> yeah. happy holidays everybody and we'll come back in the third week of jan um on that note thanks everyone for tuning in tonight thanks, thanks guys sir.